In this chapter, you will be utilizing open and closed software, as well as creating, analyzing, and updating portfolios for positions and paths for career development. Deleting text. There are two ways to delete text. You can use the delete key. The delete key will delete text to the right. The backspace key will delete text to the left. Here are some popular shortcut keys to select an entire document. Control plus A. To select a word, double click on the word. To select an entire sentence, place the insertion point at the beginning of the sentence, hold down the control key, and then select the entire um, sentence by pointing or clicking on the sentence. So the shortcut would be control plus point. To select an entire paragraph, triple click anywhere in the paragraph. Selecting a vertical block of text, you learned this in chapter one. You will hold down the alt key and drag with the mouse down the column text. Control plus B bolds text. Control plus I italicizes text. Control plus U underlines. Control plus spacebar restores the text to its default setting. Control one turns a document into single space. Control two adds double line spacing. Control plus five gives you 1.5 line spacing. Control plus L will align a paragraph on the left side. Control plus E will center a word or a paragraph. Control plus R will right align either a paragraph or text. Control plus J justifies aligns. That means it aligns it from the left to the right margin. Control plus Enter creates a page break and starts a new page in a document. Control plus Shift plus Greater Than makes text larger. Control plus Shift plus Less Than makes text smaller. It is important for you to learn and use the shortcut keys. Don't be a mouse addict. Copying and pasting. To copy, I would use Control plus C. And in this situation, I want to copy this entire paragraph and place it in another section. So I'm going to triple click on the paragraph. I'm going to hit Control C. And then I'm going to go where I want to duplicate the uh, text. And then I would do Control V to paste it in. If you look at this example, then you can see that I have duplicated the text. It is now located in two places. Now, cutting text is different than pasting text or uh, copying text. I want to take this paragraph and I want to move it elsewhere in the document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to triple click on the paragraph, do control plus X to cut, and then I'm going to find where I want to paste it. So this is where the first green line is where I, I cut it. And then I went above essential outcomes and I pasted it, control V, above it. So now instead of having a copied version, I have cut it and moved it elsewhere in my document. The Format Painter Tool. The Format Painter Tool is a great tool to know how to use. It is located on your home tab underneath the clipboard ribbon. 
The Format Painter tool is used when you want to copy formatting, like color, font size, font style, to text on a page. If you single click on the Format Painter tool, it copies formatting once. If you double click on the Format Painter tool, it copies formatting more than once. To exit out of the Format Painter tool, you hit Escape on your keyboard. In this section, you will be learning advanced word features such as tabs, hourglass, inserting tables, converting text to tables, converting tables to text, and smart art graphics. Creating tabs. If you look on the ruler above the document, you're going to see a small black mark on the ruler. This is a left tab. The left tab will set text as blocked or left aligned in a column. If you look on the far left side, you're going to see your little black icon that has a little L, and that black L is your left tab. To set my left tab, all I need to do is come over to the ruler, find the point where I want to set my tab, in this case, it's set on the number two, and I will left click on the number. I can also set, set a center tab, which will center the column. If I go to the tab icon on the far left side of the page, if I click the left tab once, it will change to a center tab. And then all I have to do is come back to my ruler click on my ruler at the point where I want to set the center tab and I will be able to set it. There is also the right tab which sets all of the text as aligned right in a column. In this example we want to set this table up so that it's centered in the middle of the document horizontally. So um, I want to center these three columns on the page. I will first select my entire table. Then I will go and set a left tab at approximately the three mark on the ruler so that I can set the middle point for the second column because that's, that's the center point. Then I will go to the left tab and mark, put a left tab at the one mark on the ruler for the first column. Then I will go to the 4.5 mark on the ruler to center to set a tab for the third column. After I have my tab set, it's time for me to begin to move my columns so they line up to my left tabs on the ruler. So I'm going to place my cursor in front of the word dog in the first column and I will hit the tab key once. This will move my first column to the one mark and it will adjust the other columns to fit at the three and the 4.5 marks. Then I'm going to place my cursor in front of the word Siberian Husky and hit the tab key once. This will move my first column to the one mark and adjust the other columns to fit at the three and 4.5 marks. I will continue this process down the first column until all of the first column is lined up with the one marker on the ruler and if you notice when I hit the tab key for the first column, the following columns adjust accordingly to the left tabs for each of their columns. Um, when you're done and you turn off your formatting marks, you look at your table, and this will give you a better idea whether or not it is centered. Um, you might have to do some minor adjustments to make sure the texts are centered on the page. I know I did. Um, I made some adju minor adjustments in my second column 
um, when it came to the British short hair, uh, Persian, Siamese, and Mai's coon, I, um, Maine coon, um, I moved my left tab. Instead of being on the three, I moved it to about the 2.75. And then because I had the first row were column headings, I wanted to make them look a little bit more centered. Um, I just selected that first row and then I moved those tabs. Um, I just adjusted them so that they would sit and be centered over each of the columns. Creating indents. On the, uh, the ruler, you're going to see an hourglass. This hourglass is used to set indents. The hourglass breaks into three parts. The first line indent is the top part of the triangle, the top, top triangle. Indents are normally set at 0.5. So if you look at the example, I took the first line indent and I moved it to split apart the hourglass to 0.5. If you look at the ex paragraph example, you're going to see that the only line that was moved um, to 0.5 was the first line. The second part of the hourglass is the bottom triangle. This is called the hanging indent. This hanging indent is used for works cited pages. If you look at the example, you are going to see that I moved the bottom part of the triangle to 0.5 on the ruler. This way I split out the, the hourglass. If you look at the example above it, you're going to see that all of the lines were indented 0.5 except for the first line. The last part of the hourglass is the left indent, which is the base of the hourglass or the square. This will left align text on the margin or what we call blocking the text. If you look at the example, you're going to see that I moved the left indent to 0.5. Notice the whole entire indent or hourglass moves to 0.5. If you look at the paragraph example above, you're going to see that all of the lines in that paragraph are blocked or set at 0.5. Inserting a table. Go to Insert, click on the drop down arrow underneath the table icon. Drag your cursor over the columns and rows you want to insert into your document. In the example below, three columns and five rows were inserted. Adding data. Click on the first cell in the table. Add the data, then hit the tab key. Add data going across, not down. When you get to the end of a row, keep hitting the tab key. Adding designs to a table. To add a table design style, select the table cross. Go to Des Table Tools Design and click under the drop down arrow for the table styles. Then select the design that you want for your table. Auto fit contents in a table. Select the table cross, go to layout, click on the drop down arrow for auto fit, select auto fit to contents. Center the table on the page. Tables are normally centered. Another way that you can do your auto fit to content is by selecting the table cross, right clicking, find auto fit, and then select contents. Converting a table to text. You can convert a table to text. To do this, select the table by selecting the cross. Go to Table Tools Layout. On the far right side, select Convert to Text. When the box opens, convert 
the table to text by selecting tabs. That is the most common feature used when you're converting tables to text. Then click OK and your table will no longer be in, your text will no longer be in a table. Converting text to table. When you have a series of text that you want to put into a table, select the text you want to convert to a table. Select convert to table. Make sure you do not select insert table, but convert text to table. Check columns, rows, as well as how the columns should be separated. So in this case, we have a number of columns we want is four. And then we want them separated by tab. Actually, it's by three. Then click OK. Designing a converted table. The converted table looks as follows. To add design, click on the cross in, top, in the top left hand corner to select the table. Select Table Tool Designs and choose your table style. There are a variety of different types of SmartArt. You have list, process, style, st cycle, a couple sets of hierarchy, relationships, matrix, pyramids, and pictures. To access SmartArt, go to the Insert tab find the illustration ribbon. You will see a listing of all the different types of SmartArt. You will select the one that you want to use, such as process, and then you will go in there and have different types of options for the SmartArt of your choosing. Open up the SmartArt graphic text box. Place cur a cur your cursor after the first bullet in the box. Type in your data. This is the first level. Do not put your cursor in the graphic boxes. When you have typed the SmartArt text box, text will appear in the text box and in the graphics. Farm Animals is the name of our graphic art. To go to the next level, hit Enter. On the second line, find the Demote icon under the Smart Art Design tab and look for the Create Graphic Ribbon. Click on Demote. Your cursor will be on the second level, moving the graphic underneath the first level Farm Animal box. Type in Cows. This puts the Cows title underneath Farm Animals. Hit Enter and this will add the remaining second level data. Adding the third level. Place your cursor at the end of the word cows. Hit the enter key once. Demote the bullet one level. Hit the demote key once. Notice that a third level appears underneath the cow box. Type in the third level data. In this case, underneath cows, we typed in Jersey, Holstein, and Swiss. To add the data for the rest of the animal, farm animals, follow the same procedure given in this slide. If you notice, underneath cows, we have a list that all apply to the cows. You'll do the same thing for dogs, pigs, and cats. Promoting in SmartArt. To go back up a level, place the cursor at the end of the Swiss name and hit Enter. Then click on the Promote icon, which will take you up a level. Type in the data Pig. The end result is as follows. You will see three levels. You have your first level, which is the farm animals. 
the second level, which is cows, dogs, and cats. And the third level is the list that goes underneath each of the second level items. So under cows, we have Jersey, Holstein, Swiss. Dogs, we have Collie, German Shepherd, Pug. And under cats, Calico, Siamese, and Tiger. To exit out of the text box, click on the X in the top right corner of the text box. Adding color and style to SmartArt. To add color, use the Change Colors drop-down icon. Make sure you click on the SmartArt to open the tools. To add a style, go to the SmartArt Styles ribbon and click on the drop down arrow. Congratulations, you have just finished your practice skill sets. Go to Google Classroom and open up the Unit 3 Chapter 2 Shortcut Worksheet. Complete the worksheet. You are to do this by yourself, no sharing of answers or helping others on this worksheet. Use your PowerPoint to help you with the shortcuts. If you share answers, you will share a grade. Turn in your worksheet for grading when you have finished. Please use Quizlet to review for your Unit 3 Chapter 2 Shortcut Worksheet Quiz. When you are ready to take your quiz, please let your teacher know. Then continue on to the next slide for further instructions. Go to Google Classroom and open up Document 3. Download the document to your Chapter 2 Word folder. Save the document. Add the following skill sets to the document. Some of these skill sets are review. Word art. Select the title on the page. Add word art and then add word art effect glow of your choosing. Convert text to a table. Select the first list on the first page starting with course instructor through the last classroom number. Convert the text to a table by tabs. Add a table design of your choosing. Auto fit the table to contents. Then center the table. Convert a table to text using the table at the bottom of the page. Convert the table to text by tab. Select the text and center the text on the page. Using vertical selection, control plus drag, change each column to a different font color. Save your document and go to the next slide for further instructions. Go to Google Classroom and open up Document 4. Download the document to your Chapter 2 Word folder. Save the document. Add the following skill sets to the document. Smart Art Graphics. Following the Step 4 paragraph on the page, add a process basic Smart Art Graphic. Adding text, using the promote and demote features for SmartArt, cut step one, determine your needs, and paste it as the first bulleted item in SmartArt. Note, make sure you open the text box to the left of the SmartArt so you can add text. Go back and select the paragraph that was under the first step and cut it. Following the first step in SmartArt, demote the bullet one level and paste it in the paragraph, paste in the paragraph you just cut. Continue this process for each step until you have all of the four steps and their paragraphs in the SmartArt. Orientation. Change your page orientation to landscape. Look for the orientation icon underneath the layout menu tab.
On the fourth document, you are going to be changing the height and width of the SmartArt graphics. Select the SmartArt graphic. Make sure you have only the outside border selected. Do not select any boxes inside the SmartArt. Look for the size icon under SmartArt Tools Format. Change the height of the SmartArt to 2 inches. Change the width of the SmartArt to 9 inches. Change the color of your SmartArt and add a SmartArt style. Insert a table. On the second page of the document, following the very last paragraph, insert a new table that has two columns and three rows. Copy the text Monday through Friday from the paragraph right above your table and paste it into the first row, first column. Go back to the paragraph and copy the hours from Monday through Friday and paste it into the first row, second column. Continue this process until you have all of the hours inside the table. Add a table design of your choosing. Auto fit the contents. Center the table on the page. Go to the next slide for the last set of instructions. Hanging indent on the hourglass. On the second page, find the second to last paragraph. Add a hanging indent using the hourglass and set it at the 0.5 mark on the ruler. Website hyperlink. On the second page, find the second to the last paragraph. Look for the website address. Select and copy the address. And then paste the address into the hyperlink icon. Tabs under the Landscaping Tool section. Select the three columns. To set the tabs, set a left tab at the 2, 4, and 6 mark. Six mark. Place your cursor in front of the first letter of the first line of the first tab. Hit the tab key once. Go down the column and hit the tab, tab key until all of the columns are aligned. Change the color of each column using the Alt-Drag shortcut. Save your document. Open document three and four. Call your teacher over to grade your work. Go to Google Classroom. Open up the Unit 3, Chapter 2 Reading Organizer. Complete the Reading Organizer by yourself. You are not to share answers or help each other on the worksheet. If you share answers, you will share a grade. Turn in your worksheet when you have finished. Congratulations! You have just finished all of the practice work for Word. Go back to the website and get the next set of instructions.